Okay, well, a lot of us make fun of the pollsters. They actually have a hugely influential uh, position on our politicians and the policies that they pursue on behalf of us. Now, I can tell you firsthand that some so-called leaders haven't got an intuitive bone in their body and they will not act on anything without getting some professional focus group or research, as they call it, done. Now, the problem with that is it demonstrates a, a non-leader, a person of no real conviction who can and will be influenced by whatever will reward them politically. Now, it's true that pollsters get it wrong a fair bit too, and I suspect that's because the polarisation of so many issues leads many to say one thing publicly or when faced with a, a survey, while they'll do another thing when it comes to private actions or casting their ballots. And there are plenty of politicians in that boat too, I have to say. And I think this country needs politicians who do the right thing or at least back their own judgment rather than surrender it to focus groups. Well, one man who knows exactly what he stands for is New South Wales Libertarian Party MLC, John Ruddock. Delighted to say he joins me now. John, thank you for joining me. There were two voice polls out in the last couple of weeks, one from Redbridge and one from Freshwater, both saying much the same thing. The voice is going to fail and fail badly. Tell me, why do you think that is? Corey, this has happened in every single referendum that we've had. We've had polling in this country since the 1950s. Uh, we've had a lot of referendums. And when the, when the Prime Minister of the day comes out and says, oh, maybe we should have a referendum on this, like Robert Menzies said, oh, maybe we should have a referendum on banning a little obscure political party, the Communist Party. And at first, the polls uh, were very high. Oh, yes, yeah, 75% of people said that's a good idea. And even if, I, only up until about six weeks before referendum day in 1951 did those polls fall off a cliff. Same with the Republic and same with every other referendum we've had. It, it fought, the closer you get the more it falls off. The Australian people are very wise people. They don't want to change their constitution. Now, I want to tell you something very interesting, Corey, which I just stumbled across yesterday. There's been 40... This, this will be the 46th referendum since Federation. Now, only eight have ever won. And, and of those 46, the Labor Party... This will be the Labor Party's 25th. Now, only one that the Labor Party has ever proposed got up, and that was in, like, 1946. Now, <clears throat> Gough Whitlam put up six, six fails. The great Bob Hawke put up six, six fails. But very interestingly, in 1988, Bob Hawke put up four constitutional referendums. They didn't just lose Corey. They, there was four of the one day. They all had a no vote of over 60%, and two of them had a no vote of almost 70%. Now, after that, and I just saw... that I, I was reading some old newspapers yesterday. It was very interesting. After that bad loss for a very popular Prime Minister, Bob Hawke, I like Bob Hawke, we all like Bob Hawke, uh, Bob Hawke came out and publicly said, he said the Labor Party is not going to do another constitutional referendum again unless there is concrete bipartisan support. Lionel Bowen, his Attorney-General, said the same thing, and Bob Hogg, the National Secretary of the Labor Party, they're all in agreement, we're not going to do it. Now, to Kevin Rudd's credit, Julia Gillard's credit, they were Prime Minister... They didn't worry about a constitutional referendum. One of the, you know, there's only one other Prime Minister, Labor Prime Minister who didn't try. Now, our vote comes along. And hey, so I'm, going to interrupt, I'm going to interrupt you then, John. I'm going to interrupt you there for a second because Kevin Rudd did want to have one, remember, on recognising local government in the, in the Constitution. Tony oh, Abbott right. signed up to it. The Liberals signed up to it. The half a dozen of us, I think, voted against it. And it didn't come to pass because there was a double dissolution or because they were, had an election. Well, that is interesting. Well, you were in Parliament well, at the time, Corey, so he was I'm on sure his agenda. Right. You were yeah. there in Canberra at the time, so I'm sure you're right. That had slipped my mind. So, yes, OK, so Kevin Rudd was going to be yet another Labor Prime Minister to come along with one of these ideas. OK, now, uh, so, so Hawke, I call it the Hawke rule. Uh, Labor Party governments don't win referendums, or they've won one out of 25. OK, so now here's Albo, comes along... And Hawke says, look, we, we, we might do a referendum, but we've got to have it totally locked in that we've got bipartisan support. On election night, May 2022, the, the Prime Minister-elect, Mr Albanese, announces in his uh, victory speech, we're going to have a referendum on The Voice. Now, at that stage, he didn't even know who the opposition leader was going to be. OK, so how could he have had bipartisan support? And so now he's gone and put all this, all this effort, divided the country like this, and his referendum is not about, you know, industrial relations or the Medicare levy or, or even a republic. No, 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 no. This is about an issue which has, you know, a racial issue, 
which is dividing the country. And I think it is heartbreaking where we're at right now. We've got every, we've got people all over the country calling other people racist, and it, and it, and it's. I, I think it's. I think these polls are actually understating what the result will be on election day, referendum day. Well, see, that's fascinating because uh, there's some people have put to me that pollsters have got it wrong in the past. You had Trump 2016, um, the Republic vote 99, as you, you just addressed, the recent defeat of Bill Shorten. I mean, these all defied the polls pretty much. But my sense is with you, how do we explain that, you know, more people are being silent on this and it's going to be worse for the government than uh, it, they predict in the polls? Well, all those examples you gave of the pollsters being wrong all understated the conservative side because there's an element out there, like with the Trump vote, uh, people, and Brexit, people were, a, a small percentage of people, but enough to switch the polls, were intimidated when the pollster rings them up. Some anonymous person rings it up and says, you know, you're going to vote for Trump, yes or no? OK, and there was, there was about 3 or 4% of people who were going to vote for Trump, did vote for Trump, but they told the pollster... No, oh, no, 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 I'm going to vote for the Democrat. OK, so, so this is why. This is why I think the polls are going to understate the support that No has, uh, because when polling is a pretty good science. It's been around for, you know, it start, started with Mr Gallup in America in the 30s. It's a pretty refined science. They, this is why we're surprised when they get it wrong. They usually get it right, particularly news poll. Uh, so this is why I think, if anything, it's going to... Uh, and the, the trend line is very much in favour of No as well. Yeah, it's certainly moving that way. And I've got to tell you, it seems like the trend line for the government is going the wrong way or it's reversed course. The honeymoon is well and truly over by the looks of it. The coalition's now ahead on primary vote. Now, I know there's a few coalition supporters out there cheering, but they're still miles away on a two-party for bird basis. Now, you're in a minor party. You've formerly been attached to the Liberals. But can they realistically form government? The Teals, the Greens, Labor an assortment of leftist front parties, all directing preferences away from them. And they're going to ask you, what role does that leave for the Liber Libertarian Party in Australian politics? OK. So at the federal level, it is extremely rare for a first-term government to not get re-elected. It last happened in 1931 in the depths of the Depression. But there is another pattern, and that is a federal government coming up for re-election usually only just scrapes in. John Howard lost the, the two-party preferred vote to uh, Kim Beasley in 98. Julia Gillard, you know, uh, looked like she'd lost on election night. So they usually, they usually sort of get, um, uh, you know, they, 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 but they do scrape through, through. Now, look, look, the Liberal Party talks a good game in opposition. The Liberal Party now is against uh, the misinformation, disinformation bill. OK, the, the, the Liberal Party now is talking, you know, more sense than they were in government about the global boiling issue. OK, and they say, and, the, and now they're worried about budget deficits. OK, but in office, they become Labor light. Now, what we I'll, I'll tell you something, look, I think Peter Dutton is a pretty good bloke. OK, I think he's, you know, he's not a control freak like ScoMo. Uh, he's not an egomaniac like Malcolm Agreed. or Kevin. OK, I think he's a decent guy. But, gee, oh, gee, Corey, he made a terrible mistake. He wants to put us through another referendum on, on a similar issue. And not only that, he wants to give us regional voices. Now, this is, this is weakness on his part to do that. I'm sorry. And he took, a year, he took a year to come out and say that he doesn't support the voice. No, no, no. Th this country's got problems. We can turn it around. We ne need good political leadership. We need a purist party, and that's what the, lib the libertarian Liberal Democrats are. We've got a new... You know, on the night of the referendum, Corey, uh, there's, an, uh, there's an election across the ditch in, in our good friends in New Zealand, and there's a libertarian party over there called the ACT Party. They are on track. They are on track to get 15... Uh, about 15% of the vote and be a very important party in, in the next government. Now, I think the National Party's going to win, which is the equivalent of their Liberal Party, but they won't be able to get legislation through without the ACT Party. Now, that is a good combination, having a mainstream centre-right government, but they are dependent upon a libertarian, purist party, and that's what we believe is going to unfold in Australia in the coming years. Yeah, I actually agree with that. And encouragingly, it looks like a libertarian president is leading the polls in Argentina. So Argentina might be on the comeback. We could all move there if uh, things get really bad here going forward. Hey, John Ruddick, thank you so much for your uh, history lesson and your time tonight. Really appreciate it.